I was raised by my loving parents who always taught me about God and showed me His love. But to me, he was just a bunch of cool stories in the Bible, and it was my parents' faith and not mine. But that soon changed when I joined Hope Youth in grade six. I had become hopeless and helpless, and thankfully, my mother had brought me to an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. It was there where I met two lovely Christians who always told me that I should come to Hope with them, but decided to go there one day myself. It was as though the crowds parted, and his words were meant just for me. Right then and there, for the first time in my life, I felt the forgiveness of God wash over me, and from that moment on, I began my new life with Jesus as my personal Savior. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. It was in a diner near the corner of Lakeshore and Southdown Road in Mississauga when all this began. At that time, it was two couples scribbling our plans onto a napkin for a church in the GTA West. To everyone else in the diner, it's probably all it looked like, just two couples scribbling on a napkin. But I don't think the four of us or anyone else in the diner could have ever guessed what God had in store for us. Before we knew it, those scribbled ideas turned into a Bible study with 18 people at an office in Oakville. 18 people excited and expected about what God might do with them. During this time, we met with the leaders of a struggling Calvary Baptist Church in Oakville. And shortly thereafter, they voted incredibly to join our group and become Harvest Bible Chapel Oakville. Our first official church service was Easter 2004, and then God filled the seats. The church was growing fast. Youth ministry started, ministering to the young people, dedicated Christ-centered groups for adults, took up the church building on Wednesdays, and by Easter of 2006, we already had to add a third service on Saturday nights. Not long after that, overflow seating, and then get this, a fourth service. God was changing lives faster than we knew what to do with them. In 2009, we got to send out our first church plant to the city of Brampton. Then another church plant followed in the Niagara region in 2011. Because one thing for sure and has been true since we started, we are serious about the call of the Great Commission. And this was just the beginning of God's missional calling on our church. 2011 was also the year we formed a gospel partnership in Romania. All of this to see churches planted and strengthened, national church leaders trained and resourced, and people reached who have not yet heard the name of Jesus Christ. After years of praying and God's people stepping out in faith, in 2012, the Lord blessed us with the ability to move into a new property at 500 Great Lakes Boulevard, the very building we are at today. This came just at the right time as our old building could no longer fit our growing church family. And God wasted no time using the new space. We got to start the Market Food Bank, expand our soul care ministry, see our annual kids camp that ministers to hundreds of children get started. And at the same time in 2013, we saw more church plants go out, including Toronto West and Brantford. And then in 2014, we planted a church in Kelowna. And in 2017, we're not done. Another church plant was sent to Ottawa. How awesome is that? It was at this time we introduced our new discipleship model, the 5G Life, a model defining what we believe really matters in the life of a Christ follower and one of our core practical guides as a church. In 2018, we officially joined the family of churches called the Great Commission Collective, also known as the GCC. This is a network of churches dedicated to planting churches and strengthening leaders across the world. We are so blessed and so thankful for our relationship with the GCC and for how God uses it to this day. Then one year later, on Easter 2019, the church changed its name to Hope Bible Church Oakville. Why? Because that name reflects the resurrection hope experienced by all of us who are genuine Christ followers. I am constantly amazed by God's grace upon our church. He has allowed us to see so much, to host multiple annual conferences with thousands of people nationally and even internationally. We've got to see the Hope Institute come to fruition. He worked through the generosity of his church to pay off the mortgage of 500 Great Lakes in 2022. That is so encouraging. We were also able to witness another church plan in Quebec of all places in 2022, and even a satellite site in the town of Orangeville.
Well, today we are more than 18 people in an upstairs office, that's for sure. In fact, we've seen hundreds and hundreds of people baptized in hope by God's grace. Even though we've grown, our mission remains the same. We are absolutely dedicated to see lives changed for God's glory. And by God's grace, we'll continue to make disciples of Jesus so that more and more people will know the eternal hope that is only found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because after all, Jesus is the hope of our church. And if any more fruit will be seen in hope's future, it will be because of him who brought us this far. He's the one who uses imperfect, broken people as characters in his great story. Yes, he could have used fancy boardrooms or seasoned pastors. He could have used paper at least for our first meeting, but he didn't. And isn't that so like our God? He can use struggling churches, ordinary people, and even diner napkins. He uses what he chooses for his glory. He has written our history. He is writing our future because he alone holds the pen.